We recently integrated Flux into Kittle, which is an absolutely amazing AI model. And in this video, I'm gonna put it to the test to see exactly how wonderful it is. I've been getting a lot of great reviews on it. I've been seeing tons of your all's prompts over in the Discord. But to put it to the test, I asked another AI, ChatGPT, to give me ultra difficult prompts, very large, very detailed, to give to our integrated model, Flux 1.1 Pro, and we are going to test them verbatim. I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna generate it, and then we'll walk through the prompt together to see exactly what happened. I have five for you. One definitely has text in it, so we're gonna see how it does. And then I'm gonna do a follow-up video to show you one of our new features called Image Restyle. So let's go ahead and get started. So over here in Kittle, you can open up Kittle AI right here. When you open up the panel, you're gonna see these four options right here. We're interested in image generation for the moment. You can switch back and forth between Dolly 3 and Flux. I'm going to go with Flux and you can choose your aspect ratio. You can choose whether or not you want your images to be public, meaning it will go into our AI library or if you want them to be private. And then you can also choose from saved styles that you have added or image styles down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and copy and paste in our first prompt. All right, so now we got that in. As you can see, it's pretty long. There's the piece of text that we're gonna be looking for, welcome to the future. Uh, and this looks like a cinematic, futuristic cyberpunk kind of scene. So let's go ahead and generate it and then see what happens. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, well, it definitely has welcome to the future correct. You can see over here, it, it looks like it, the AI is suggesting even more AI art that's been generated in this style. Oh, there's one on the side here. Welcome to the future here. There's some people here. There's this portal right here. Um, let's generate one more just to get some diversity. Whoa, okay, there's another one. Welcome to the future. All spelled correctly, by the way. I like this one better than this one. I like the beautiful kind of pink and blue reflections. You see how ultra realistic that looks in uh, the bottom of this one and also here as well. They even have like the direction of the colors correct in terms of like where they would be highlighted on the ground. All right, so I generated a couple more just because I thought this was super, super cool. And for us to get a look here together, and I mean, just with a couple of generations, like a couple of just iterations saying, do it again, it has created some super awesome art. I love that this one is in perspective here. Again, the way that it's reflecting on the alleyway, I think this one might be like for me the winner just because I like how it is on this one and it looks like there's some kind of like time glitch thing happening where there's like multiple of them. But let's see exactly how close we got. So here's the prompt, a cinematic cyberpunk alley at night, check. This is definitely a cinematic cyberpunk alley at night. Glistening with puddles that mirror vivid neon lights in magenta and turquoise. Okay, check for every single one of those. Framed by towering steel walls and futuristic graffiti. Okay, in this one, 1000% check. Yes, I see graffiti here. Yes, I see graffiti here. Here it's maybe a little bit darker, but maybe you can see a little bit, but these three for sure check. Suspended holograms and crackling power lines converge on a swirling turquoise mauve portal at the alley's end. Ah, that's what this is. So if you were confused like me, that's what the prompt gave me is this portal. This one, I love how it's built into the end of this. Also, I mean, I like all of them. I mean, this one's like up in the air. This one is like on the side here. I love these. These are great. Uh, let's see. While cables coil around the edges, suggesting advanced technology, that's definitely what this one's looking like. I mean, yeah, it looks like all of them are hitting that. Prominently displayed across one flickering hollow billboard is the bold, glowing text, Welcome to the Future. There it is. Sleek, futuristic font. The overall scene should evoke a slightly dystopian but electrifying atmosphere. Realistic textures, lens flare accents, and dramatic portrait orientation. You guys can let me know in the comments for each one of these. We're going to go through five prompts. I think that this nailed it. I would give it an 8 out of 10, which is definitely a higher score, I think, than our past. Uh, the only reason I wouldn't give it an exact... 10 is because of just the placement of a couple of things. I think that it wanted the the text not to necessarily be centered in the prompt. Now, I could 
keep tweaking with it and give it more stuff, but this is already a really intense looking prompt. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. You let me know your all scores for each one down in the comments. All right, we are going to paste in our second one. We're gonna go ahead and delete these generations for now. And I'm gonna leave everything as an aspect ratio of one. I could have went to a different one for the previous one, I didn't even think about that. But this one looks like we have an underwater scene. So let's see what it gives us. Ooh, okay, this looks really, really nice. Let's go ahead and center this. Okay, let's just generate a couple to see what it gives us. Ooh, I think I like this one even more. Let's go ahead and blow that, wow, okay. All right, let's move this one down a little bit. Also this one so we can just see it. And let's go back and, and, and check out whether or not this actually got the brief peaceful underwater realm shimmering with shafts of diffused sunlight that pierce the aquamarine surface revealing an intricate coral garden of elaborate shapes and sloth softly glowing bioluminescent plants okay definitely there is a coral reef going on in either of these here you can see the top of the water maybe more so in this one than in this one right here uh, schools of silvery fish drift between coral arches while a distant sea turtle glides gracefully in the background i love this one i love this one too let's see the scene has an otherworldly mystical quality merging photorealistic marine details with subtle fantasy elements I can get that, especially from here with all of this kind of like wavy seaweedy coral look here, as well as like in here, you see all the different silver fish that's all the same. I can get that. Pastel colors. Ah, okay, that makes sense for this one. Uh, blend with pockets of vibrant neon-like corals that emit a gentle glow, evoking a dreamlike serene underwater heaven. Wow, that's a lot to say. And hopefully you're seeing already with just how powerful Flux is. And I haven't even selected any image styles, by the way. So we could try one of these with an image style that you see down here. I haven't done that because I've wanted to just give Flux the, the bear prompt with the styling that ChatGPT gave me based on the parameters I gave it. You know, I gave it stuff like, make sure this is the style, make sure that you give it descriptive words, make sure you detail, you know, don't give me aspect ratio, you know, I'll do all that myself, blah, blah, blah. So I haven't picked any image styles down here, but it'd be really interesting to see what happens when I do select one. All right, it is time to insert our third prompt right here, which looks like we're gonna go with gothic, kind of mystical forest. So again, not selecting anything, and let's see what happens. Whoa, I dig that. I mean, this looks like a beautiful basis for a book cover right here. You just put the text right here in the middle in some kind of like gothic looking font or maybe some lettering or something. And boom, you have it. Let's go ahead and let's generate one more. Let's see, I'm just seeing what it's, okay, let's just generate one more again. Let's always compare. Obviously, if it's exactly what you want when you get it, you don't have to do this. I'm just doing it for the video. Okay, pretty spot on, both very similar. So let's go back and investigate the prompt here. A sprawling gothic forest scape immersed in deep twilight. I think we got that for sure. Where towering ancient trees twist with Baroque style flourishes and their gnarled roots form natural arches. Crushed it immediately. That's fantastic. Like this is definitely kind of like creating a circular like you know, pathway while it still reaches up. Intricate filigree finds radiate a faint silver glow, highlighting the forest floor covered in moss and faintly luminescent mushrooms. Definitely got that here. Look at all this. Luminescent mushrooms everywhere. And looks like we have some in the background. Yeah, we have some faintly here in the second one. A lone lantern flickers beside a stone path that leads deeper into the woodland's shadowy depths. The scene is painted in a detailed... Oh, wait, lantern. Okay, yeah. We definitely have that here. In this one, there's the one lone lantern that I think maybe it got a little bit better. In here, there's two. I'm actually okay with that. Maybe the pathway here looks even more dreary. This one maybe looks a little bit more inviting. The scene is painted in a detailed moody scene. High contrast lighting to emphasize the foreboding yet enchanting essence of this dark fairy tale forest. I think they're both excellent because the farther you go back here, it looks more dreary, right? It looks more like looming, something bad might happen. And this one, you already kind of have that vibe. This one, I love the blue. This one, I love the kind of super muted green. I think it crushed it. Again, you let me know what you think. I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. Yeah, just because of the di discrepancy and maybe some mushrooms here and having two lanterns here, but 9 out of 10, that's a pretty high score. All right, time for our fourth 
prompt right here, which looks like a countryside scene of some of something or another. So let's see what happens. All right, so we definitely have a countryside scene here. We have a house over on the side. There's one generation. Again, let's do another one just to compare, see what we like. All right, cool. Let's go back and see. Ooh, I like the kind of perforated, like messed up edges here. So let's check this out. Let's go back. All right. A whimsical pastoral countryside scene reminiscent of a classic storybook illustration. Yeah, I definitely got that. Like, especially this one. I mean, they're both excellent. This one maybe even more is a little bit more illustrated. With rolling green hills, check. Wildflower meadows, check. And a cozy thatched roof cottage by a winding stream check for both okay just depends on where you want it placed i prefer this one i think but storybook wise this one's even better soft sunlight bathes the landscape in a warm golden glow while the clouds in the sky form airy stylized shapes delicate watercolor textures and loose brush strokes add a gentle handmade feel yeah i like that a faint touches of pastel provide a dreamy quality thousand percent i get the dreaminess more here than i do in here although i still get this kind of like storybook storybrook aspect of it a hint of magical realism appears as a tiny sparkles among the flowers suggesting hidden fairy life let's see i'm not sure that it got that one completely uh, again i am being critical of you know how we're i'm supposed to put test this to the limits um maybe this one a little bit more because i can see a little bit of sparkle kind of across here if you, if you can see it just like a little bit just a little hint across the water and the sparkle back here like boom 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 yeah we could probably refine that and like give the prompt a little bit more explanation of what that's supposed to look like but overall i give this one another nine out of ten just for that one little detail but in terms of stylizing and getting things exactly where they're supposed to go it crushed it all right we're coming down to our last prompt here and i'm excited for this one because this portrait the specific that it's giving is like a snow leopard which are extremely beautiful so but what it's doing what it's asking is to give a realistic portrait of an anthrop anthropomorphic snow leopard that is dressed in victorian attire <laughs> this is gonna be wild i hope it does beautifully i this will be the one that i'm gonna test with some image styles just because i think it's so insane but let's see what happens. I haven't gone through all of it. I, I wanted this to be a communal, like you and I together, figure out what happens. I didn't want to, you know, I'm not generating anything before the fact. This is live time. Whoa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yo, what the heck? He's wearing a robe. Like that's, hold on. Yo, these, look at the, the fur coming out of the, look at this robe looks real. Do you see this? The gold, oh my gosh. Like, that's incredible. Let's just go back and I'm not even gonna say, do the second one. Hyper-realistic portrait of a regal, anthropomorphic snow leopard dressed in elaborate Victorian attire. Yes, posed against an ornate velvety drape backdrop. Yes, wow. The feline's piercing blue eyes contrast with the subtle, cool tones of its immaculate fur, intricately detailed with natural rosettes. Check. The clothing features embroidered brocade patterns in deep burgundy and gold, accentuating the noble dignified pose, painted with classical characteros techniques that emphasize dramatic contrast and textural fidelity, evoking the grandeur of a resident Renaissance era masterpiece. 10 out of 10. This is a 10 out of 10 quality generation. Like, ridiculous. I'm not even going to do a separate one by itself. I am going to go to, let's see, let's just go through these real quick. Show all, let's see. We're going to go with, uh, I don't know really what raw means. I haven't asked yet. We're going to go with photography just to see what happens. I don't know how much different it's going to be. It's just going to tack photography as a style onto the, the, the prompt that I just gave it whoa okay i'm gonna start putting these just like side by side so we can check them out that is also nice so he's a little bit more posed a different way this coat is open but it's beautifully done like seriously seriously beautifully done i don't know what's gonna happen let's click raw i'm not entirely sure what that means but let's go for it okay that is so interesting we've we've gotten like a little bit different aesthetic here Again, I'd have to figure out exactly what raw means, but like, yo, 
This is crazy. I'm gonna throw an audible here. So out of all of these, I do still like the initial one the best, the one that just Flux gave me with no extra stuff to it. I'm gonna throw one audible here, and instead of doing a hyper-realistic portrait, I'm gonna do an anime style portrait of a regal anthropomorphic snow yeah so because i want i want it to be in that anime style i just want to see what happens when i click when i just i just changed anthropomorphic portrait to anime style portrait just to see what happens okay so it this this looks a little bit more what you'd call like final fantasy anime but i love this coat here so this would be more of like ultra realistic 3d generated you know unreal engine 5 or something like that let's try manga anime style let's see instead of painted and you're drawn okay and let's see what happens i love this prompt <laughs> this is amazing Okay, so I think because of the intensity of the prompt, it's still really adhering to the kind of regal, realistic, photorealism aspect of to it. I would say this is the most realistic, and these two are more like, what would you say, like super hyper 3D rendered styles. But let's see, I think I may have one already here in anime. So I'm just going to select that as a style and just see what happens. Okay. Yeah, so it definitely gave me more of an anime drawn. Yeah, especially this, the shading on all of these. I could see this being like one of those. There's a tactic now in anime where they kind of use flat, like 2D with 3D to suggest certain depth. And it looks like they're doing that with the head here. Yeah, everything else is that kind of 2D style except for the shading and the shadows. So either way, it was a 10 out of 10. I mean, I tested it to the max. All of these were near hits completely. Like, there was never really a miss. So you all let me know in the comments what you think about this new Flux integration with Kittle. Personally, I think it's way better than Dolly 3, at least for the generations that I've been getting. Now, I want you to look out for the next video where I'm going to be going through the image restyler. And with the AI image restyler, I can select any one of these images or I can select anything from an element, a template, a piece of text, anything, and I can tell our AI to make it in a different style. So I could give it this image of a, of, a, of a leopard, or I could give it an image of the Kittle logo, and I could just ask the AI to give it to me in a scary Halloween style or a surreal vintage photo style, and it will do it for me. So you're gonna wanna look out for that video where I do that next. Make sure you ask any questions you have specific to this down in the comments so we can answer them. Don't forget to check out the new UI update. I did a whole video explaining the brand new interface of Kittle with all of the new features and tools that you have available to you now. So don't forget to check out that video as well. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.